Nutrition is the biological process through which an organism absorbs the necessary nutrients and liquids for the metabolism, for reproduction, growth, as well as for the overall maintenance of our vital functions, among other things. For many years, wild horses lived in the grasslands where pastures and food were plentiful but of low quality. And as horses evolved, man found a way to help with their nutritional needs, giving supplements that with time became an important support. In order to talk about horses' digestive physiology, we must start with the basics. Horses are monogastric animals, an animal with only one stomach, small in relation to the total size of its gastrointestinal tract. Foraging is the fundamental part of its diet and therefore a fundamental part of its life. It is well adapted to eating and walking. That is because the horse, being an animal of prey, can't afford to spend long hours just on eating. The horse has developed a defense system against predation in its ability to walk and eat. Since it's an animal that doesn't have to eat large quantities, the stomach is able to adapt to the quantities of food an individual consumes. And so food reaches the stomach after the horse has acquired it through the use of its sharp teeth. After the horse has found its food and brings it to its mouth with the help of its tongue, comes the process of mastication. The horse is an animal that needs to chew a lot. There is a big difference between the time it takes a horse to eat a kilo of hay, for example, which takes around 40 minutes, the time that it takes to chew 3,000 to 3,500 times, versus a kilo of concentrate, which takes around 5 to 10 minutes to eat, or about 800 to 1,000 mastication times. Therefore, it's very important that each time a horse eats cereal, that it also consumes fiber, hopefully before the cereal. Because it's the mastication that stimulates the digestive processes. This enables good salivation, a good production of saliva, which moistens the bolus, helping it arrive softer and properly chewed to the stomach so it can start its journey through the small intestine. The horse's small intestine, even though it's very long, acts very fast, making the digestive processes in this section very efficient. That is why the modern horse, or the modern equine, is an animal in need of a good quality diet, of good quality supplements. After the food has passed through this section, where everything that occurs is basically held by enzymatic processes, that is to say, a production of enzymes of the organism, then this food or nutritional supplement with a structural component that we commonly call fiber, reaches the intestine, the bowel, and the colon. Here, no enzymatic processes take place. The processes here are fermentative type processes caused by the active participation of bacteria and protozoans. As for the fermentation of fiber, that structural component given by the fodder and the grass, the horse can obtain a good level of energy. However, this energy is metabolic in other words, it's an energy that the organism uses for basic functions. When calculating the diet of a horse, we're basically focusing on what we call dry matter. That is because what really takes away hunger for an individual is the solid component of matter. That doesn't mean that the liquid component isn't important. Water is a fundamental nutrient for life. Even though there are some schools that don't consider it as such, water is an indispensable component for life. However, at the time of calculating we don't include water, we only take into account the solid part, the solid component, which includes carbohydrates, fiber, fat, 
sugar, vitamins, and minerals. Horses generally require 2 to 3 percent of their body weight in dry matter. The most important aspect, however, is how can I divide that 2 to 3 percent in the healthiest way possible? Let's take a typical case. A stable horse or a maintenance horse, which uses 2 percent of its body weight in material. I can divide that 2 percent in a proportion of around 70 percent fodder to 30 percent cereal, or 60 to 40, or 50 to 50, and that is the limit. To add cereal to that proportion, to have more cereal is to risk putting the horse under undesirable sanitary and nutritional conditions. It is also very important for horses to always have salt, to have a daily routine contribution of chloride. In other words, it must always be available. It is not a good idea to do what many others do, that is, to give the horse a fistful of salt every once in a while, or every two days, or to take salt and mix it with the concentrate. To forcefully give chloride is not healthy. It is the horse that knows, according to its losses through urine or sweat, how much salt it must consume. One of the most critical and important phases in this process in the nutrition and feeding of a horse is the rearing phase. Here we take a colt from the time it's around one month of age until it's a minimum of 12 months of age. This time can be lengthened depending on the development or the value of that particular colt. We also have what is called a breeding mare. From a nutritional standpoint, the breeding mare isn't considered as such until the eighth month of gestation and during nursing, a very important phase, especially for the first few months. Before the eighth month gestation period, the mare can be nutritionally considered like any other maintenance animal or showcase animal in the case that the mare is performing, or if it's doing a physical activity, a sports animal. There are many types of performance horses, such as the saddle horse, the coach horse, the pack horse, the show horse, horses used in bullfighting and so on. Then there's the maintenance horse, which is the animal usually left alone, except for the occasional ride once a week or every 15 days, or the horse that is only used for children's vacations, in riding schools, for children especially. They are easygoing animals that use up very low levels of energy and therefore don't require specialized diets. Thank you.